Taking decisions brings consequences in terms of losses and gains. In our example with the bank loan, uh, when accepting a loan applicant, that's all about increasing the gains, the profits of the bank. And when rejecting an applicant, that's all about decreasing losses. And the situation may not be symmetrical. Potential gains and potential losses of a decision may not be equal. The question we discuss now is how to factor these matters in our decision process. So we are still in the case of um, multi-class classification. So we have um, an input and we are supposed to classify this input um, having k possibilities for the class this input belongs to. And let's denote by alpha i the decision of assigning class ci to the input. And also let's denote by, and so this would be for all um, i from 1 to k. And let's denote also by lambda i k, um, I'm, I'm going to use small k and I hope this is not confusing. Lambda i k, this is going to be the loss uh, incurred by assigning class c i to an input that belongs to class c k. So the real the real class was CK, but we have assigned uh, class CI, and then, then we have a loss, and we denote this by lambda IK. And so with these notations, we can now um, write the um, uh, equation for the expected risk. So the expected risk uh, for taking decision alpha I This is all about um, the following equation. We denote this by uh, the risk associated to taking decision alpha i given the input x. And this is about a sum uh, from 1 to capital K by the loss that we take when we assign, so this is small k, uh, when we assign uh, class k to x. So the way to read this is uh, the risk associated to taking decision alpha i is all about what's the loss if your input in fact was belonging to another class ck. And we, you take this sum for all the possibilities of the correct class that that input may have belonged to. And so as a decision in this framework, we are going to have choose that action, so choose um, alpha i with the minimal expected risk. And I want to bring this to the simpler case when we have um, so-called zero one loss and what this means is that correct decisions uh, have a zero loss and incorrect decisions uh, they are all equal so it doesn't really matter in which way you are incorrect which class you chose incorrectly they are all equal, so uh, they, they have exactly the same loss. And, and for example, we can just say this is a one loss where this one uh, is not really, uh, you know, it doesn't have a significance in terms of some measuring units. It's just the idea that all the losses are equal uh, in, in this case. And um, so what this means is in terms of our lambda, um, so this is a case where our lambda has only values 0 and 1 
and it's zero if we were correct the class that we have assigned i is exactly the real class k and it's loss one if there was anything else so if, if we made a mistake we predicted class i but in fact the class was uh, k with, with some k different than i and in this case the risk of taking alpha uh, action alpha i um, is is the following so the risk will be the following is the risk of alpha i given input x this is equal to as before the sum for all the mistakes you, you could have made so all these erroneous um, uh, decisions uh, you, you made uh, were in fact the real class of input x was k and you multiply this probability by the loss lambda i k but in our case lambda i k is just 0 and 1 so this equation can be rewritten as the uh, sum with k different than i um, of the probability that the class was k for input x and this is exactly the same as 1 minus the probability of the real, real class having been x and so this is this is intuitive in this case the risk of taking a, a action alpha i is simply one minus the probability that you you output in the correct class uh, ci and so as a decision in this case uh, this is simple so to minimize the risk Uh, we will just take the most probable class. So the one with the uh, highest probability C given um, X. And as a matter of fact, in this course, we are always going to assume that we have such a situ situation of a zero one loss. So all losses are, are equal. Um, it's just going to simplify our reasoning and, and the formulations we have. Um, in reality, in, in real life applications, it might be that sometimes you will have situations where the losses are not all equal. And in fact, it's not difficult to adapt the decision processes that we discuss in this course for that general case. One more point that I want to discuss in this video is that of some applications that might be of such a nature that misclassification carries a very high cost. So misclassification um, should be taken in, into account because in fact they, they do have a, a high cost. And, you should always avoid it and examples for this include all kinds of medical applications where you really don't want to misclassify the um, uh, case of, of the patient in front of you but also examples such as the automatic recognition of zip codes on an envelope or on a, or on a package that may send that letter or package to the wrong destination with uh, quite a lot of cost and so to handle this case uh, the way we will we will do it is we will consider an extra option for our decision process um, and the extra option is going to be in the form of a k plus first um, class standing for reject so in some cases we might just decide that you know the, the the risk of misclassification is so high that i prefer not to take any any chance with this and i'm just going to label the input as reject and in such a framework the loss function could be something like this um, we would just have um, as before in in, in terms of these uh, lambdas uh, i and k where we took decision i but in fact the reality was that 
this was from class k. So this would be uh, as before zero if we were right about it. So if i equals k. And um, it could be uh, one if, uh, in fact, um, um, i is different than than um, than k. And I'm going to add here one one more thing which will become clear in a moment. Uh, but we include this uh, case of k plus one. Uh, if we decide to reject, so. If we decide to say, you know, i is k plus one, then I'm, we are going to say, you know, is lambda. So just to sum this up, the loss function is going to be lambda i k. Uh, the loss is going to be zero if we took the uh, correct decision. It's going to be some lambda, and, and we discuss this in a moment, what kind of um, um, value this could be. If we decide to reject, so the, there is a cost related, um, uh, associated to the option of rejecting that input. And the cost is one for any attempt at classification we made that was erroneous. So for, for any i different than k and i different than k plus one. So for anything, anything that we attempted, um, you know, to classify, we didn't say reject, but, but we, we got it wrong. There is going to be this cost one. So, Essentially, just like before, it's 0, 1, um, and in case we uh, reject, the cost is going to be this uh, sort of lambda. And the point is that this lambda is just a parameter that you choose depending on the application being um, just in between 0 and 1. And the risk of reject in, in that case, so um, I'm writing here, so this would be the loss function. We talked about misclassifications, and so we have the risk of reject and we have the risk of uh, misclassification. So the risk of reject is simply going to be um, we took action k plus 1, so we rejected input x, and um, uh, the risk associated to this is, uh, you know, maybe this was, uh, I mean, this input was coming from a real class, uh, one, one out of these, and so we have this probability the class was in fact uh, k for input x, and there is this uh, uh, cost or associated to our reject decision. And uh, because this probability sum up to 1, this is equal to lambda. And the risk of misclassification, so the risk of um, of, of choosing, uh, you know, uh, erroneously the class, this is going to be uh, in terms of the risk of taking decision alpha i, so we associated uh, class uh, i to input x. Um, this is uh, the sum for all these k's uh, different than i, so we were wrong about it. Um, for um, the probability of, uh, you know, the class being, in fact, uh, this is a small k for input x. And this is exactly, because the, the, all these probabilities sum up to 1, this is exactly 1 minus the probability of, um, you know, doing this correctly, giving uh, as an output i. And so, as a decision procedure, the way we will do it is, I'm just going to write here in the title, so the decision is going to be um, something like this. We will choose the class C, so choose CI that minimizes Uh, this risk of misclassification and uh, so this will be you know this will be a, a, a real class and we will give in the output we will give i so class ci and maybe I'm writing it like this so we will give the class ci simply if the probability of this class ci given x 
is larger than 1 minus lambda. And we are going to say reject, so reject otherwise. And I just read this uh, one more time. So what was new in this case is that we have this possibility of reject. So what we will do as a decision, we are going to choose the class that many minimizes the risk of misclassification. And then we will check also the cost of a reject. And we will balance this out. If the um, risk of misclassification is the smaller one, then we are going to choose that class. And so we are going to make an attempt at a real classification. But in the other case where, in fact, uh, the risk associated to a reject is smaller, then we are going to choose to, to reject. And there is only one more comment that I want to make about this. Um, this whole framework is meaningful if the lambda associated to, a, um, uh, to the risk of reject is strictly between 0 and 1. The point is that if you take lambda to be equal to 0, then in this framework we will always, uh, you know, we can always reject because a reject is going to be as good as a correct classification. So our learner is not going to even make an attempt to learn anything. It's just going to give reject all the time. On the other hand, if you take lambda to be 1 or even higher, then we will never reject because a reject is going to be costlier than any mis misclassification we might make. And just an observation kind of pointing to uh, some content that, content that we will have later on. Um, what happens in the case of a reject? Uh, the point is that in that case, the decision to classify might be declined to a human. Um, but there is also the possibility that in that case, we decline the decision to another machine learning algorithm. And so this leads to the idea of combining multiple learners and we may discuss this um, concept in the second course on the foundations of machine learning that we will have in period two.